Chocolate comes from the cocoa tree. Midges pollinate the cocoa flowers. So if you like chocolate, you can thank these tiny flies. In fact, most of our fruit crops, grains, and vegetables need to be pollinated. It's no exaggeration to say our lives depend on pollinators. Let's learn more about pollination. Pollination is a key step in sexual reproduction among all flowering plants. The purpose of pollination is to allow individual plants to exchange genetic information. Flowering plants belong in the plant group of angiosperms. The majority of angiosperms are pollinated by animals. Other angiosperms, such as grasses and many species of trees, are wind-pollinated. Flowers are the sexual organs of plants. All flowers include the stamen, or male organ, and the pistil, or female organ, which contains one or more carpels. The stamen produces pollen. Pollen is a fine powder comprised of pollen grains. Pollen is released from the anther, which is part of the stamen. Pollen contains male gametes. As a result of pollination, pollen is transported from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another. Pollination culminates in fertilization. When pollen grain arrives on the stigma at the top of the carpel, it stimulates formation of a pollen tube along the style. The pollen grain travels down the tube, eventually reaching the ovule at the base of the carpel. After the male gamete fertilizes the female gamete in the ovule, seed and fruit development begins. Because plants are not mobile, they must rely on various agents to carry out pollination. Plants can be pollinated in two ways, wind and animals. Wind-pollinated plants have small, dull flowers, lacking petals and nectar. Their pollen is shaken free and transported by the wind. These plants produce a large amount of pollen, gambling that some of it will make it to another flower. The more pollen that is produced, the more chance there is that the pollen will encounter a stigma belonging to another flower. Nearly all grasses are wind-pollinated. About 80% of flowering plants rely on animals to transfer pollen. Most of these animals are insects, including bees, butterflies, moths, beetles, wasps, and flies. Some vertebrates are also pollinators, notably hummingbirds and some other birds. Even some bats and small mammals are frequent pollinators. So what is in it for the animals? How do plants encourage pollinators? Most plants supply some form of reward, often some sort of food, like nectar within the flower. Other plants use deception to fool pollinators. This orchid, for example, mimics the female pheromone, making its flower irresistible to the male bee. The male bees try to mate with the orchid, inadvertently pollinating it. Once the animal arrives, the flower deposits the pollen on the visitor. Upon its visit to the next flower, the pollen is transferred to the stigma. Animals and plants are engaged in a mutualistic relationship. In most cases, both the plant and the animals benefit from their interaction. Animals get a reward while the plant is able to pollinate.